Okay, it's it's 8.30 a.m. for me now, so I think it's time to get started with this. So what we're going to do here is we will watch the Foundation Best Build Order for Beginners Foundation video. And we're going to discuss a little bit about what's going on in that video. The video is 18 minutes long. And I will demonstrate what I'm talking about in a single player match. And then we will go through some map generations in the scenario editor. And I'll talk about how I'm going to wall that specific map or how I would wall that map. And then we'll select a few people from the chat to do a 1v1. Actually, no, no, before that, we will do a little uh, little Q&A, you can say, answering questions that people might have. So come up with some questions. We will have a section for that. And then we'll select a couple people from chat, and I'll cast a 1v1 game with that opening. And then, you know, you guys follow it up with whatever you want. And uh, yeah, that is going to be the plan here. Okay, so I am going to demonstrate what we did here. So what we learned. We can talk about what we learned. So start by queuing some vills. Make a few houses. That's great. And oh, basically, we want to make sure that villagers are going here. I mean, you can do some little tricks like teleporting your vills if you know how to garrison. But... Um, it's just for a little bit of efficiency. So another thing that you want to do is always stack the sheep. Anybody who doesn't know how to do that, select everything, right click here, and then shift Q to the, the next pig. And then it stacks, and then the villagers don't have to move at all. So in terms of in terms of what we're doing here, we're going six on sheep. And then we're going to go for four on wood. Here we go. Uh, a couple points in the video. The text on the stream says, go to gold eight bills before feudal agents to cast. Ah, okay, yeah. I must have made some uh, some mistake in the editing. It's fine, though. People can assume or they can, they can understand what I mean. Um, so right now, what we're doing is we want to think about how we want to wall. This is a pretty standard map to wall, like kind of bigger walls. We have the gold in the front, but you can see that there's there's wood lines. It makes it pretty obvious where we want a wall. Of course, this one's on the, the low ground here, but it's fine. There we go. And we just want to find the sheep. We're not going to push any deer or anything like that. We're just scouting where do we want a wall and where are our resources. There we go. So we have it all. There we go. And... We'll just finish scouting here because we want to see the edge of this. And we want to see this because we want to know how to wall over here. All right. So four on wood. We can bring in a boar now. We can start walling now too. We can send a, a villager out to build a couple of houses and then wall. And if we do it correctly, we should, we should have this boar in on time here. It's slightly like like that. We can do this. You don't have to kill it with the TC like that. And don't worry about if if it's like outside the TC, it doesn't make that much of a difference. Like if it's like that, you really don't have to worry. So this fill is gonna build a wall here. So then we'll be protecting the gold. The next priority for wall is here as well. So we wanna have that there. These houses need to come up because we need the houses anyways so that we don't get housed. If you see that you don't have enough food here, use your force drop pot key to force drop some of them. There we go. And we want to bring in this boar. At around 180 food on this boar, like the first boar, you bring in the second boar. It'll come in on time. And we want to go to berries around now. It doesn't need to be perfect though. Like you don't have to go to berries right here or anything. Just around this timing. Go. Don't stress on the berry timings. There we go. And we just uh, kill that boar. We want to get to four on berries. Three to five on berries. You can even auto scout at this point. You don't really need to do much. Let's just make sure that that's walled. And I'm thinking, okay, well, 
Let's get another walling villager. So there is quite a bit to wall. Oops. I meant to wall out there. Actually, you know what? She can wall here. Why not? There we go. These bills are not doing anything, so let's just get them there. Wall on the way up. I mean, yeah, you can wall earlier or you can wall on the way up. I Either way, since this map is a bit bigger, I'm choosing to wall a little bit earlier. We're going to go up on 21. So here we go. As long as the walls are up before you are in the next stage. So I put it a little bit further away from this hill, so you can't get the high ground with melee units. That's why I put it there. There we go. And... You want to distribute two on this side, two on this side for the berries. Okay. And we're pretty much ready to go up. So what we want to do, we can go two lumber camps. And we can go, um, basically send those there. And so see how we don't have enough food to go up. That means we just need to make another vill. You just make another vill. It's close. It was close. But the efficiency wasn't quite there. Went a little bit late to the the berries. And also, the main thing was that I started walling earlier. So you can see how if you wall earlier, then you might not be able to go up super fast. So if you wall on the way up, you're going to be up a little bit earlier. Um, worth pointing out. Usually I like to put a house sort of on the end pieces of the walls like this. It just gives you a bit of vision. And we don't want to forget about this wall. There we go. Beautiful. So we're chill. We're chill. We don't even need a barracks. We don't need anything. We can make the barracks as soon as the opponent attacks with something. We can make the barracks. For now, we're just going to focus on the eco. Which guys do you use the wall? Here, we can pause. So, the walling villagers that I used this game were sort of... They would have been on food. So, I had four on, four on wood. So, throughout Dark Age... If you have four on wood, the rest of the villagers all go to food, food, be it berries or or hunt. So um, the reason I wasn't able to go up is because instead of having villagers on food, I prioritize sending villagers to wall. Yeah. So yeah, I used the villager that went out to build the houses to build the wall here. If your map has berries forward, for example, you can go two houses and then build the mill with that bill. But since I wanted to wall the front, I didn't want to send, like, the house builder to build these and then go down here. I just wanted to go here and then just wall this and then maybe wall this. Um, yeah, but see how basically even if my opponent was doing a fast rush, they would go up against walls here. And then we can just repair behind and um, it's going to be completely fine. So the more villagers that you use to wall during Dark Age, the slower you can go up. So maybe one villager to wall in Dark Age is going to be fine. But if you do send two to wall like I did, then, well, you might not have enough food to go up on 21. Um, 21 vills, but, you know, 22 pop is, is kind of slow. But that's fine because as long as you don't idle your TC, then you're going to be completely fine. Um, on lower levels, people aren't going to have the fastest aggression. This uptime is going to be fine as long as you get the walls up. So let's keep going. So what you wanted to do, if you have two lumber camps, you want to have um, nine on wood. Nine on wood for two lumber camps or seven on wood for one lumber camp. Actually, what we can do is we can pause and I believe I have... Yeah, here we go. I have this up. So let's take a look. Um, oh, my camera is in the way. Here, we can we can put these back on as well. But let's just hide this for a sec. So on the way to feudal, nine on wood. That's for two lumber camps or seven on wood for one. Three to five on berries. We have four on berries and the rest on sheep. It's super simple. Those are the numbers that you need to need to know. Gain a lot of ELO by going up one bill later. There's no need to go up super early. I found exactly going up super early is is high level stuff. Like you do that once you reach 2K. You don't need to go up super fast. Um, yeah. So, um, what we're gonna do in feudal age, you can see, it's gonna be get double bit horse collar, add 60 or add a farm every 60 wood, and keep making villagers basically. So, we're not really going to do anything too fancy here. As long as you just pay attention to your own gameplay, 
you're gonna have a very strong castle age timing okay so let's let's go back and um go through that here here we go and see how i'm not really doing much okay these are gonna run out so what we do is we can shift q them to these you always want to do that then look like i don't even have to touch them they just go to the the resource and we're chilling it's, it's not a problem at all these are all gonna become woodcutters so this guy he's done so you can just come back so you want to learn your select lumber camp hotkey and double it hockey and and farms so we just queue both of those and then we can start making farms you can you can auto farm like this too it's there's nothing wrong with it the only thing is that deleting stragglers is kind of bad you don't really want to delete stragglers ideally but it's fine if you do so like you know we can get rid of the straggler it's fine we want to get to around 15 farms so i'm not even gonna do anything if the opponent attacks me, okay, I'll need to react. But I'm not even going to do anything here. We're just going to add farms. Every villager that comes out is going to add a farm. So see how we're floating a little bit more? It's because we have 10 on wood instead of 9. You know, sometimes you have a little bit extra. I, I said 9 on wood because that's the perfect number. Whereas 10 will allow you to float a little bit of resources, which could be good if you need to get an emergency barracks or something like that. I find going up late puts you behind in military production. Well, I mean, that's why you have walls. If you're behind in military production, if you have walls, you're completely fine. There we go. Yep. You delay with walls, and then you get defensive skirmishers behind them or some spears against scouts, and it's fine. If you see that this, this looks open, obviously it's not open, but if you want to check, you want to hover a palisade wall, and it'll go red if there's something there. So that's really useful. Okay, so we have quite a few farms, not 15 yet, but we will want to have a barracks coming up at some point. Now, these diagonal walls are a little sketchy to build on, so you can do that, but he could come in at that exact moment, so you have to be a bit careful. Um, we can just get another one there. You don't want to forget your house, right? So you want to keep an eye on those houses. You like to build them on the walls? That's, that's actually slightly late, so I'll be housed for half a second there not the biggest deal but you know what if you don't want to think about houses just go like that there's no no problem with just going like that we're not trying to play high level we just make a bunch of houses don't have to think about it for a while okay we can just make that and we'll be able to get the mining cap next there we go so one thing is that if you do overcue houses, you don't really have wood for the mining camp or like other things. So there's always a sort of a potential potential loss. But you know, you can always just delete one of your house things and then just put it back. No problem. So you need two prereqs to go up. So remember, I said five villagers plus wheel or eight villagers before um, for upping. So we can just force drop the woodcutters because we want to get the blacksmith as well. Oh wait, why did I make a range? Okay, that should have been a, a stable. I'm, you, you make a range if you want to go for um, defensive skirms. Otherwise, you know, you, we're just trying to go for knights. So here we're gonna just force drop the woodcutters and get wheelbarrow. The gold will work perfectly here. And um, yeah, there we go. So we could be making skirms if we need them. We could have had the range a little bit earlier. Basically, as soon as your opponent attacks you with, say, men or arms, you want to get the barracks and you want to make defensive skirms. Um, yeah, but as long as you have the prereqs on up, or for, before you want to click up, then it's going to be good. So see, five on gold. We're going to have just 200 gold as soon as we, this wheelbarrow completes. It's going to be perfect. We have lots of food. Only 14 um, farms, so we do want to get to 15 for sure. So we'll just add another one here. We click up. These villagers, they're going to be done. They can go up here. We want to get... Okay, so here, let's pause. So there's a few things you want to do um, at this stage. And I've, I've written them here. Here, let's uh, go here. So this is the feudal to castle age transition here. We, we did all of this. Very villas make farms or go to gold. So, you know, we've, we've done that. Go to gold, around eight villagers, four, one, and go. Yeah, we, we did everything. Around 15 farms. You know, we had 14. It's fine. Doesn't matter. 
Um, 9 to 10 on gold. 15 to 17 farms. Rest on wood. That's the balance that we want. And then in Castle Age, we're going to want to queue knights, research bow saw, plus two armor, houses, of course, attack opponent after six to ten knights. It's just going to be a lot easier to, to pay attention to. And we'll get husbandry. And then it's just do what you need to do from there. The game gets a little bit crazy. So we're going to go for that. There we go. So let's go back. Oh, also, I don't have written there, but you should get uh, gold mining on the way up. So what we're going to do, gold mining upgrade. We're going to get a stable. We're going to get two stables, actually. But uh, as long as the stables are up, once we're up, that's that's what matters. So we want to have a few more on gold. These three will go to gold. We have 15 farms, right? 15 farms going to be fine. We want to have plus one, one armor or armor and attack for stable units. We can get one of these builds to build another stable. There we go. Ideally, you don't delete that this early. Just like that. Should be fine. It's kind of awkward laming my own um, wood line like this. Generally, you don't want to place your buildings too close. Because if you do, you can't really take this wood line easily. So this building placement is not really very good. But you can see why it's not good, right? But I can use the this as the TC location. I think you want stables up sooner for blood. Well, no, you can get bloodlines here. Obviously, businesses don't have it, but you can get bloodlines here. You can get the stable started as soon as you reach castle or start to castle age, and then then it still comes in on time. We don't want to load up too much on the gold here. We can just get another farm. There we go. So you have to think. Okay, what are we actually using our wood for? Not really anything, right? We just we just need food and gold. We need wood to expand more farms and maybe make TCs later. But for now, we don't really need the wood. We just need 100 wood in the bank for bow saw. But uh, yeah, so night spam, bow saw, plus two armor. There we go. We'll see if pathing works and the, the knights come out here. There we go. And I mean, on high level, you would attack with just even the first two knights, but we're gonna chill. Okay, yeah, so pathing doesn't really work. So, um, in that situation, we just go out this side. We just have to pay attention. And be cautious. Okay, be cautious of having your rally point. This happens to me sometimes too. Look, we have our rally point on gold. We're gonna be floating way too much gold. Your rally point of your TC here should actually be on wood. So we'll set that to wood. We we sent really like an, an extra bill there. It's unnecessary. There we go. And we just keep keep queuing knights. You can get husbandry at some point. It's nice to get husbandry because just moving faster is always good. Okay. And and behind this you can add TCs, you can add a siege workshop. Look, we're floating all this wood. There's lots to do with the wood. So you know, if we want to add a TC, we can add a TC here while we're attacking, too. So we can send the units forward, add that TC while we attack. And just keep queuing knights. Constant knight production. We're going to get housed if we don't pay attention. So, you know, let's make a house. Since you're building so many units. Ideally, you reinforce your walls. So see how I'm, I'm going here? There we go. Just, just do that. Then so we don't have to think about it. There we go. So, one thing I didn't do here was control group my units. So what you want to do is always control group your units so you can hop back. So you can go here, okay, do some eco management stuff. Okay, so it's like, okay, I have, you know, this is getting inefficient. Maybe we, oh, well, we can't make a TC. We'll put the TC there, it's fine. Now we hop back here, he's got some spears. Well, it's only three spears, so we just dominate those. Skew some more units. Make some farms, okay, hop back to here. We're keeping an eye on the wood count. That's the main thing, okay. So, wood count and idle bills. If there's idle bills or wood, we wanna be spending. So, there we go. Nice. And as we add TCs, we're gonna have less food for knights. So, as we add TCs, we wanna be prioritizing villager production. So see, we have, we still have a bunch of wood, so let's just spend it. Every time you have 60 food, or 60 wood, you want to be making a farm. So that's why it's good to have straggler trees, because then your bills can chop while they wait for 
um, enough wood to make farms. There we go. And at this point, we're just basically making farms. See how I stopped night production for a while? I like to use four villagers from gold to build one of the TCs. Otherwise, you, you just float way too much gold when you're transitioning to boom. If you send woodcutters away, then you'll have less farms. You can't really keep the, the boom going. But if you send from gold, then you're not even using the gold on knights anyways because you're using your food on, on villagers. And it just works out really well. So that's another uh, tip to keep in mind. Oh, let's place the farm, but it's, it's not a big deal. Honestly, not a big deal. We have wheelbarrow from earlier. And uh, yeah, I mean, against a lot of players, you should just be able to win with this knight attack. This follow-up is just when it doesn't really work. Or this this booming. I mean, this, this booming is sort of the standard play. It's just good to be able to do. But uh, yeah. You can even turn on auto reseed at this point. Once you have your TCs down, you're just gonna be reseeding anyways. So it's pretty good. There we go. And you know, he's dead. So that's pretty much um, what you wanna be doing here is working towards this knight attack. That's the entire point of this gameplay. Walling, don't die in feudal age, work towards this knight attack. Um, oh yeah, they buffed palisade gates too. Definitely putting a palisade gate on the front. It can be good on current patch. Okay, let's go back. So next up, let's take a look at a few different generations. Always have auto reseed on. Uh, well, it could be spending wood when you want to on farms when you want to spend it on something else. So it is bad, but you know if um, if you're just playing knights, it's usually not an issue. It can be though. It's it's definitely not optimal because just sometimes you need your wood for other things, like like your villagers building a farm when you need to build a house or something like that. Uh, okay, so we're just gonna look at some generations here. And I will give you some ideas of what I would want to, um, or how I'd want to wall. Um, dang, okay, the, uh, you can't press P to go down. It looks like they changed the UI here. Did they change this? Oh, no, they, the Palisade's still bugged. Anyways, y you can't, um, you have to make it exactly diagonal to make it a diagonal. If you make it like this, this is the old behavior where it goes like an L shape. So, um, yeah, they just still haven't fixed that after like four years, whatever. It's fine. Uh, can we zoom out? There we go. A little bit. We can zoom out a little bit. So this map, this map's kind of hard to wall. So you'd probably put your lumber camp here. Oh, man, they made it so that the you can't really press the letters to... You, you have to have this hovered to have the letters work. Well, that makes it a little bit annoying. Um, so we have to go in here. House, house. So on this map, I probably would build my houses. Like I, I'd probably go like house, house. And then I would build palisade walls. Like I'd kind of go behind eventually. And I'd want to go sort of like this. Something like that. And then this would need to get walled. So even just to there. And I'd just go to the TC here. I'd just go to here. This could be just resource walled. So you'd have bills and you'd resource wall it like that. This would be walled here. And we'd just be walled to the TC. So we just go like that. So see, see how this is really functional? This is just, you know, we, we could go out to here, but it's not necessary. We just resource wall this. We can defend with skirmishers. This side is all walled. We'd want to have our our strong buildings in the front too. So you'd want to be walling like, um, where's the barracks? So ideally you'd have maybe barracks in this area. Like you'd want to delete some. Maybe you'd have it like here. Barracks. And maybe you'd have the archery range here, for example. Like here? Something like that. And you might have a few more houses as well. So you might, instead of having... Um, instead of having... Oh, oopsies. Yeah, it's just a little bit buggy right now. Uh, instead of having the palisade like that, you'd go maybe two houses like that. 
something like that. So then this this side is very easy to defend. These strong buildings are really strong, <laughs> or the big buildings. Palisade walls they're they're fairly weak. So when your opponent is attacking, you generally want to build stuff behind. So he's attacking one of these tiles. You just build two houses behind while you get your skirmishers out to shoot him. And then, then the men at arms will just die. Um, if he's got scouts, even men, even your skirms will do one damage per hit. It's not a big deal. It's okay. It's He still doesn't want to throw HP, right? And you can send some spears around the outside to kill scouts. Um, the key is just to keeping keep the opponent out. You can repair or you can build behind. Either way. But see, if we build like this, even Britain archers can't range this gold if you have the walls like this. So it's completely safe. But you have to think about these kind of walls. And, of course, the way that we've walled here, we would have enough space for another lumber camp in here. I think two. We don't really want to take that one. Like, if we wanted to take this, this, maybe it could be better to have invested the walls like a little bit further out. Something like this, but that requires one extra house. And then even then, it's kind of, it's still it's sort of sketchy. It's okay, though. So you could secure this wood line like that. But yeah, planning your walls out from earlier is going to be really important. When is too much commitment to rewalling? I mean, if, if it's not necessary to rewall, if you have military to push him back, then you don't really need to rewall so much. But as long as the enemy can't get in, then it's fine. Just don't lose Vils as well. So always pull back weak Vils if he has archers. If he has archers, the best thing that you can do is market block. You build a market. So archers in Feudal Age, they have five range with fleshing. So market is four by four plus the one tile from the palisade. He can't shoot your villagers if you have a palisade wall and you build a market behind. So you can build up the market even just to 50%. He runs away, then you delete the market, you get 50% of the market cost back. You don't even need to finish it. What do you do when the front of your base is completely open? Uh yeah, so let's let's generate another one. Let's let's find a map that's really open. Uh here we go. This is an ugly map. There we go. Oh, they added a search. Ah, uh, they added this search, but it it bugged out stuff. Oh no. I I tried to utilize the search function and now it's it's not giving me the options. All right, we just reset it, though. All right, here we go. All right, don't touch anything. Rule number one. Okay, so first house would be probably like here and here. Um, we would probably want to lumber camp here by the berries, because then we have villagers here. We would, we would have a mill. Oh, man, it's kind of annoying that it doesn't work. Mill there. Next two houses. So we, we need to build two houses in this age. It's pretty pretty easy. One, two. Now this side is walled. If he tries to run past the TC, he's going to get shot by the TC. You just have to garrison. Um, okay. Next up, we'd prioritize walling this backside. So you could wall from here. It's pretty far, though. It's not even necessary. We don't even need to go out here. Honestly, this map, I'd probably just go like this. And then we would work towards walls behind. We'll just go to here. Or, even better, now that I think about it. See, these are the things that you think about during Dark Age. Actually, we go here. Because do we need this wood line? Not really. We don't need it. And if we are really wanting to save resources, which we do, we would have the barracks, something like that. Oh, I have to keep the cursor there and go like that. Look, barely any palisade walls. We're completely safe. And honestly, like these don't even need to be, oh, whoops. These don't even need to be placed for a while. Also, I made a mistake here. Like I, I, could, I could do it like this, It'd be a less, I think there was a berry here. A anyways, anyways. You want a wall really small like that. Recession economy walls. Well, I mean, if you don't have to build lots of walls, then don't, right? I do have a video on walling. If you go exclamation mark walling, I go over stuff like this. Uh, but yeah, see how functional these walls are. Barely any walls. 
Okay. And if we want to secure the gold, um, you'd put a mining camp. Mining camp here. There's a few ways to do it. So initially against men at arms. Boom, boom, boom. Like that. Ah, deleted. Whatever. Just just imagine that there's still a uh, palace or sure, something there. Anyways, we're, we're mining here. It's it's like three palisade walls to wall that in. Later on, if we want to finish the walls, say that there's scouts hoovering around your base. Okay. We go like this, this, maybe wall a little bit further back, and this. There we go. Look at how good this base is. Look, look at how safe it is. And maybe, maybe in this area, we would probably have something like an archery range. And we would probably have a couple more houses. And maybe this palisade would be deleted and maybe we just have another house here just gives it a little bit more surface area we would delete this so that more vills can get around it and suddenly we're looking pretty good these sheep would not be here these would just be palisades there we go so we can make spears we can make archers or skirms uh, rather and if we're not really prepared boom power right there power it's going to cover everything against archers. No problem. Scouts don't want to sit under the tower hitting a uh, bunch of walls. Beautiful. Farm space is lava. Yeah, but like we have enough. Where's the F? One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's say that we don't have these straggler trees. Get rid of those because you wouldn't have them at this point. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 18 farms you can place in this base. That's pretty good. That's more than you need. I don't think you need any more than that. It's pretty good. So, you don't need a lot of space. You just need to use it effectively. And you'd want to have a blacksmith too. Oh yeah, by the way, you can also build through corners. Very important to know. So you can act, you don't have to delete this palisade wall. You can build this blacksmith through this corner and you just put it there. And then once you have that going, then you can delete these palisades if you want. Okay. And what does that do? That allows you to build a house through this corner. There we go. And now you can delete that one. A little bit more space to walk around, position units, whatever. You know, you can't really put anything here other than more houses, but still you can do that. I could rather tower the gold than full wall here. Well, you, sometimes you need both. I think starting with the walls is good. If the opponent surprises you with archers and you don't have skirms out, then the tower is necessary. But yeah, ideally you don't place the tower, but you know, if the opponent has units, just place the tower. It's fine. That just means that you can't get your boom going as easily. But guess what? We're not trying to boom. We're trying to make knights and win the game. It's fine. The, the tower needs to be, like, touching the resource, pretty much. It needs to be here. That's going to cover. If it's, if it's like, back a bit, say that it's here. Well, look. Look at the range. It, he can still put his archers here and just, like, shoot you. It's, it's too far away. So, it needs to be, it needs to be, like, kind of touching it. Like that. Something like that. This side is not as good. This side is the front of the base. So you want to be sort of on this side of the gold. If you put it on this side, it's like he's going to just attack from here. You want the tower where your vills can easily garrison. Exactly. What if he towers any of your resource? Well, yeah, that's the problem. So if the opponent is towering here, we need to go back to here. Um. So the thing is, is that this build order isn't going to be good again in all situations but if it's more of to teach the fundamentals of making walls making villagers making houses or make yeah making houses making farms that's the important thing some maps are going to be harder than others to make work on this kind of map if the opponent's tiring you i mean the opponent will just have exposed vills forward you just run your vills you just take this if he's towering he's not going to have military most likely and if he has military, well, you're probably too high enough level to to really make just the straight up build work. And you should probably like have defensive skirmishers early, for example. 
Against towers, you just make skirmishers. Like, you evacuate your first wood line, go to the second wood line, make skirmishers, and you're fine. If he's towering at 1,200 ELO, he's probably idling for TC for two minutes. Exactly. What's the ELO range you think is viable? Well, I mean, I even open like this sometimes myself. You can use it on high level in certain situations. Um, obviously, on high level, I'm pushing gear, and that gives me a little bit of a boost. But just going straight Ecotex isn't necessarily bad. Um, you just need to do it in the right situation. Like, your civilization it benefits a lot from playing like that, for example. Just feel very vulnerable opening like this. Well, that's that's why you got a wall and make skirmishers. Um, so, okay, that's enough. That's enough walling for now. You guys can check out my walling video if you want to learn a little bit more about walling. I, I'll do a quick one against just AI. And just say against the extreme AI. They will actually make military, right? So, let's do it. We'll do one more. So this map is going to be a, another desert map, which tends to be a little bit easier to wall. So let's just get that first one. I like to t put the sheep close to the two vills because then they, they go to it faster. We can garrison that guy. It's not necessary, but just little efficiency things is always good to add into your gameplay. Also, just knowing your garrison and ungarrison hotkeys are very useful. Yep. Oh, it's Ismail again. This guy keeps coming up. This guy is, he's on extreme this time though. So, so remember, we're not just looking for our sheep. We're looking for how we want to wall. Obviously in the scenario editor, it's much easier to know how we want to wall because we can just see the whole map. But since we're not in the scenario editor, we need to think about it a bit more. So, in this situation, I don't really know exactly which wood line I want to take yet. So, I'm going to put my villager on straggler tree. And this wood line's looking better than this wood line. Because this wood line is... F here, I'll pause it. This wood line is far from berries and gold. If I go here, that means... Remember in the previous example where I just did like these little egg walls? I can't do that. If I take this wood line... Suddenly, I have to wall like all the way over here, all the way over here, all the way in here. It's too much. It's too much. You will always have a second wood line. It, it, Arabia spawns with two to four wood lines. So you will always have a second wood line. Like sometimes they're both disgusting and hard to wall. But a lot of the time, if you see one wood line, it's kind of out there. Just, just straggler tree until you find a better wood line. This wood line by the gold, if I put the wood line here. That means I'm securing the gold at the same time as securing my wood. That's what we want to do. So, that's what we are going to do. We're going to go down here. We want to scout a little bit to the edge. We can use sheep to scout this too. But, uh, there we go. So, let's get our four villagers on wood. We can scout with sheep. It's not necessary, but it does help when you, you don't quite know where everything is. Multiple villagers building is inefficient, so you, you'd rather have just one villager building. So we're going to just take that like that. Okay. So there's the four on wood. Next up is bringing in a boar. Just get a villager out there. Better to bring it in early than late. And so this villager that's going to be 13 out of 15. That's the vill that's the last villager that you should use to house or like that is the villager that you should use to house. I, I just knew it was going to come in perfect timing here. That's why I sent that villager a little bit early, but uh okay. So, we can go house house. We can put some more on wood here or more on food. We basically have everything scouted except for I I want to see if this is closed. Then I know. Yeah, so I could yeah. I could decide to wall say here the back to the gold to here resource wall this. So these houses may be unnecessary. We could have resource walled this to keep it safe. But this wood line here means I could have gone to here and then here. It's a bit far though. 
but you know I could utilize this later once I get TC's up that'll be good to wall later there we go um I feel like between the berries and the stone to other gold berries in the stone to other gold like wait what Walt walling to here is is too big yeah so what I'm thinking is I'm I'm thinking walling to the TC we could secure the stone if if we have a good unique unit we could like secure the stone and then go to here it's not that much more but I'm thinking to the TC to the gold to this house just making a, a little oval here and then here and that'll be very functional so let's do it Let's force drop we want to make sure to get to to um berries on time we can just auto scout and in this situation I like to make the mill one tile away it's gonna make resource walling this a little bit easier like we can just go like this and then that's basically safe want to make sure to bring this ideally at like 180 so it might be a little late we'll see it's gonna be close we just auto scout with the scout we don't need to pay attention too much to it the villagers they're not efficient on the wood I guess fixing it is kind of whatever but uh here we go we just take this down go. shift Q to the next pig and let's just get to our uh four so this we're gonna be walling a little bit later and this is just gonna demonstrate that if you wall later you will have more food and be able to click up so in the previous example I walled early and I wasn't able to click up super fast in this example it's gonna be well we don't need to go five there we'll be clicking up on 20 because we didn't really wall yet and what we could do is use a, a wood villager to wall that's completely fine but if we use a food villager to wall then it's gonna delay us so we can go like this and these hills should be carrying like 350 or whatever so we can just force drop it go up if you can't go up here just queue another bill it's fine it's not a big deal okay so remember as soon as you click up what are our next goals our next goals rebalance the economy we don't have a second wood line on this map so we're gonna say one wood line what does that mean seven on wood seven on wood three to five on berries just four is fine the rest under the the, the uh, TC it's gonna give us the perfect economy in the next age so that's what we're gonna do try not to send weak villagers when you select units you can hold control to deselect the weak ones and then you know deselect whatever and then send the right number so we go like that since the walls aren't super big we don't really need to send so many bills to a wall but we can just go like that this map is pretty tight though so we're gonna think okay we're probably gonna need defensive skirms on this map Let's make the barracks. Let's try not to have the uh, opponent kill the sheep. There we go. Let's keep taking that. Oh, he's actually men at armsing. All right. I didn't think the AI could do that. So what you can do is you can just wall like that. Just, just adjust it, right? The AI is not very smart, but um. If he gets in then it's a problem and this is why this is actually a perfect a perfect um, example of why it was good for me to wall in the previous in the previous game early if you if you have your walls up earlier you're not gonna get surprised by the militia so I was kind of pushing my pushing my walling a little bit later I'm gonna be up but the walls aren't quite complete you can get surprised by these militia but if you see the militia you need to wall it out if this wall fails you need to resource wall so you go here and you go here 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 three walls here one wall here and it's fine maybe he kills the one vill but whatever um obviously I can just react and do this also also he moved his militia back a bit and then came back in is kind of weird it, so but uh anyways if you see he's going like this you just wall like that okay and he can't get in and guess what that's a hundred and what what is it 240 resources just sitting there doing nothing it's like hitting a palisade wall 
So we know he's going infantry. We're gonna make that, and we're gonna get double bit axe here. And we will get horse collar as well. We can afford it. You can just place another palisade if you need to as well. It's fine. It's actually cheaper to just put, make a new palisade wall behind than it is to repair. Because your villager is idling a lot when he's repairing. So, yeah. You want to be careful about that. Better to just place another palisade behind if you're worried. So, one skirmisher is enough to push these back. We don't need to go too crazy into it. And now, we'll make two. We'll make two, though. Like, it's good to have a few. As long as you stay under your TC, the opponent can't use the scout to kill your skirms as well. And if he's just going to go under the TC, you just garrison. Uh, I think the AI is going to, like... Yeah, he's just going to be chilling. The more skirms we make, the slower our farms come in. Also, another thing to point out. See how I'm not prioritizing walling this. So I know... I know that his militias are here. And I know he's Dark Age. There's basically a 0% chance he's going to have any military coming from this direction for a very long time. So, I don't need to prioritize walling this. Yeah, I want to wall it eventually if there's scouts. But what I can prioritize, if I need more skirms to fight his army, I make more skirms. I don't. I only need these two skirms to really do quite a bit of damage here. Don't even need to get fletching yet. You always want to default to increasing your economy. So instead of walling, instead of making more skirms, I would like to make more farms because that will make my economy stronger, allow me to get to Castle Age at a good time, allow me to make skirmishers later. If I invest into military now, it's it's going to still push, like, if I have two guys or if I have ten guys, it's still going to push the militia away. But the ten guys is more of an investment, which means, it, like, a more of an investment into the military, which means less investment into economy. So, I want to make just enough military to push them back, just enough walls to not take damage, and invest everything else into economy. One thing to watch out for are these um, overchops as well. So let's keep going. So we want to put these in a control group as well. Because then we can hop to them. So every 60 wood, we're making a farm. And try not to delete your straggler trees because, look, my guys need to be working on straggler trees. Otherwise, they're doing nothing. Try not to get housed. So if we're almost housed, we want to be making a house. I know that he's still in Dark Age, so I know that it's not really a big rush to get these walls up. But yeah, just keep making bills. Um, farms, no problem, we're chilling. There we go. And just super simple. He just really doesn't want to go under the TC, it's kind of funny. Ideally, we do have our scout not on auto scout and just like back doing stuff. There we go. Yeah, we can. Uh, Utilize the mill. Go. And since the opponent's up, it is a good time to scout the opponent's base. It's not necessary, like, on lower levels, but this is when you would scout your opponent's base. And this is the perfect place to just make another blacksmith. Or the blacksmith and another farm. Or um, house, I mean. Go for the blacksmith there and a house there. Beautiful. Walled off. Great. And we're going to be ready to go up fairly soon. So, we're going to start sending to gold. We don't need to be super mathematic about it, just, you know, around now. Around now is going to be good. Start sending to gold. We can make another one of these. Let's get one of those. Okay, so what what does he have? Oh, dang. Extreme AI is still taking his elephant. It's not very extreme, honestly. Okay, if he goes under the TC, you just garrison. Just garrison. He's moving kind of weird. It's fine. Keep the villagers pumping. And, okay, how many farms are we on? 12? All right, we'd like to get a little bit closer to 15. 14 farms is going to be completely fine. And, uh, yeah, so again, you can build through the corners, which is useful for this kind of situation where your um, berries are going to overchop. And, well, you just don't want it to overchop. It's going to be perfect like that. Here, let's pause.
There we go. Did I double that? No, I. <laughs> yeah. You sometimes do it if you're not really thinking. Um. Here we go. So. Okay. Good. Good. We're still good. We're still good. I need to know what my opponent's doing. He just randomly has a tower here. I don't know. Opponent's base is a mess. I don't really know if he's going scouts or anything. So if I'm in the dark, I want to be walled. So I'm gonna go. I think I. You know what? I, I think I will secure this stone. I'm gonna go like that. And there we go. If your walls are looking like this, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Okay, we can't really put everything here. I'm just gonna take one more off as well. Like one more vill. And guess what? We're gonna be able to go up after this vill. This is a solid like just 35 no wheel. Look at that. With walls. With defense. Easy. Easy, easy. So, what are we doing? What are we doing? We need to rebalance the economy. Remember, rebalance the economy on the way up to the next age. Always. Up to feudal age, up to castle age, up to imperial age. Think about your economy. Think about what you're going to be doing in the next age. And think about what you need to spend, or what eco balance you need to achieve your goals. So, what are we doing? Well, for our purposes here, we're going to go to stable knights. But, you know, if you're doing crossbone or whatever, skirmishers, like, rebalance your economy for that. Uh, but Two Stable Knights is going to be the standard easy win gameplay. So, we're going to need what? We're going to need 9 to 10 on gold, 15 farms. Well, 9 on gold, 15 farm. Like, yeah, two of them are Berryville's, whatever. 15 on food. Salve. I would say that my economy is already balanced perfectly. Great. And the rest on wood. Don't really need to replace this wood line yet because what we actually need, we need 75 wood for mining tech. Always get mining tech first because increasing your economy. Remember, increase your economy first, then get your stable. We can get mining tech and stable at the first at the same time, then the second stable. And then we're good. We're completely fine. So, mining tech, delete a wall, delete a wall, delete a wall. Just use a villager here. Boom. It's going to go here. The next one's going to go here. And look at this. Boom. Boom. Enough for another farm. Look at that. We got lots of space. It might look claustrophobic, but actually there's tons of space. Tons of space. Okay. We get armor. And we're going to get attack as well. Once we can afford it. You have tons of time going up as well like look the same vill can build both of these and it'll still be up on time there's one farm with no farmer I think she's gonna go here this guy can build his own farm there we go these vills when the berries are like this just shift you to them something else also guess what my walls are so good I can build another farm right here look at that it's all part of the plan. If I wanted to, I could I could wall out here, and I could have another farm here. If I really wanted to. It's like playing Tetris without rolling dice. Um, <laughs> sure. <laughs> there we go. And guess what? Now we can invest into this wood line. Because you have to think, okay, what do, what do I need my wood for? Nothing now, right? I'm done. I'm done with spending wood. For my strategy. All I need is 100 wood for Bosaw once I'm up. Perfect time to increase efficiency with this. We have the stables down. We have the gold mining. It's perfect. They will just already have 100 wood. Right? Like once that's done. Okay. Not quite. Anyways. Close enough though. So once we're up. Remember. Boom. Boom. You can force drop this. Get Bosaw. Great. Nice. And just get a few more queued. See how we can't afford plus two armor this game right away. It's not a priority. Don't worry about it. You get plus two armor later if you need it. This game was a little bit tighter because last time I, I had wheelbarrow on the way up. This game I don't have wheelbarrow. And I just have less food. This guy can actually shift queue a house and then go down here. It's just better. Make sure you don't forget your houses. I was slightly late on the house. It's fine. Not a big deal. Let's get another house here. 
Couple more knights. There we go. Look at this. Look at this. And watch, watch this guy. He's gonna drop, and then he's gonna go build the house, and then he's gonna go down here. Utilizing shift cues, very important. Beautiful. We can even interrupt this and just go here and build a farm. We don't even need to build the, or we don't even need to get him to go to gold. All right, so we're looking like we have a lot of food, or wood, I mean. So you could add a TC here. It's a good time for it. You could add TCs, you could add more farms if you want more food. You just go in, right? Like, okay, he's got knights, cool. I have more knights than him. And you know what's better than knights is having more knights. Boom, we just spam some more knights. Boom, if we're good, we just get the weak ones back and we just heal them. Okay. To heal, we need a monastery. To make more knights, we need houses. To not lose a bunch of villagers to raids, we just get a TC. Okay, he's got a second TC. You know what we need to do against uh, that? We need to save up for plus two armor. Because with plus two armor, we can run under the TC. Without plus two armor, we can't really run under the TC, otherwise it just hurts too much. Okay, we've got tons of units in the back. Like if we run under the TC, we're just gonna get hit. This guy is just, I don't know what he's doing. He is, he is going a little bit crazy now. If you can just execute this, like what did the AI even do to me? He sent three militias at the start of the game? And then he literally just had nothing. He just died. Like, he, he didn't even make, he made a few knights, but we just had more knights. And it was over. This is extreme AI, it looked like a noob, right? He looked like a noob. You can make your opponents look like a noob if you just follow what we've been doing in this session. Just practice. Practice against standard AI, even if you know you can just dominate standard AI, anyone can dominate standard AI. It's not about what your opponent is doing. It's You need to focus on your own base. Focus on eco-management. Focus on getting those walls down. Creating villagers, building houses, every 60 wood, make a farm. That kind of stuff. Then, even a extreme AI is going to look like a noob when you just ignore what they're doing basically. Okay, react to militia coming in, that's fine, but you don't even care what they're doing. You just make knights and you send them. It's no problem. And then, once you get to players who can actually stop this, then you're starting to actually play the game. Then it's, uh, then you have to adapt, but we're not really there here. Was the walling in Dark Age or Feudal? Well, Dark Age, if you wall, bef like, earlier, you'll prevent those militia from getting in. If you wall later, like I did, you have to react to the militia potentially getting in. But you can go up earlier. So there's always a... There's a a trade-off. If you wall earlier, you might have to go up later, like 22 pop. If you wall later, the opponent might get in and you might have to react a bit. My micro really sucks. Can I improve it or should I focus on macro? My, macro is way better. Like, micro is not that important. Just, just make the knights and send them in. <laughs> What should you do if you can't afford horse collar? Uh, yeah, if you can't afford horse collar, just make Dark Age farms. And once you get to like maybe even eight farms, then just add a horse collar then. It's fine. Or just skip it until you click up to the castle age. It's fine. Uh, is there a rule to decide to go for micro walling or just walling? Yeah, I have videos on walling. Um, just go exclamation mark walling. Just Or go to my YouTube channel, check out. Just type in walling. I have a few resources on that. And um, so it depends, but I do go into the it depends. Is this useless without bloodlines? No, no, that's fine. I mean, you should probably select a sieve that that has bloodlines. Uh, if you're going fast, castle is researching wheelbarrow before you go into castle is a good idea. Yeah, ideally, like you do like to have wheelbarrow on the way up to to let your farmers bring in a lot more food. Um, but if you don't, then you have three extra bills on the way up. It's kind of, it's it's fine to not have it, but yeah, you should actually get it pretty quickly. Like, in that previous game against the AI, I prioritized getting more knights in instead of a wheelbarrow, and that can be fine as well. But, um, you know, you could just go for wheelbarrow on up. 
or like as soon as you reach castle age you could have wheelbarrow queued and you could probably still make it work uh, but you do want to have constant night production in the castle age this is three this is two stables if you go up later to the castle age three stables is good so um if you're up on like 35 bills 36 bills 37 bills two stable is fine if you're up on 40 plus bills think of three stables it's like the same thing you just have three stables and maybe maybe like 12 on gold instead so remember these are 800 elo players so it's not going to be perfect but let's see how it goes um so remember six on food and then four on wood oh the maps are kind of interesting too so we want to think about how each players should um how each players should wall right yeah, no idle TC so far for either player. Great. It's just a chill game. No military and feudal age. Just chill. Um, wait, is it no idle TC? I feel like... I feel like this side has some idle TC. Yeah, yeah, it's behind. Did capture age not start right away? Oh, capture age just didn't start at the start. Um, Here, actually, I, I should be able to... Can I... Oh, I can't restart the playback from the beginning because reasons okay anyways it's fine it's fine um so how i'd wall here yeah this is a good wood line by the gold he can easily protect I, i'd probably just do full walls honestly yeah yeah walling this first is good just go to here if you're in the corner it's easy to wall yourself into a corner because like look it's it's just it, there's only two walls that you need to do if you're on the side then you have to go like one or like one, two, three. There's sort of three walls that you have to do. Corner walls, usually walling yourself into the corner is good. Side walls, I think that um, uh, red side is going to be a lot harder to wall. This gold makes it a little bit tricky. So what he could do is he could wall here and then two here. Connect this, connect this. And then just, just across here and then down to the gold and then like connect here or go down to here it's pretty ugly though so it'd be interesting to see how he goes for the walls here um yeah definitely you need to work on the mechanics on this side but uh that's that's fine 800 elo it's it's expected i might have accidentally forced him into franks i'm not really sure yeah because it was just showing question mark maybe i shouldn't have hidden the sieves it's fine it's fine um Oh, he walled in his own bill. So yeah, preventing idle time. Oh, this this house just half got built. Actually, what happened here? Yeah, it's like half got built. So we were making the house a little bit too early. And then just shift queue didn't quite work. This bill was idle the whole time. Having the, the boar coming in um, made it a little bit rough. Yeah, just not super smooth. We're sending four bills here to go to berries. This is nice, though. So other than the idle TC, we're slowly adding the villagers. Oh, we're, we're kind of house here as well, though. Yeah, it's kind of hard to execute the build order, but it's fine. Here we go. Starting the walls. There we go. Um, so yeah, both players can definitely just work on keeping the TC running, keeping keeping villagers from going idle too. Like we should never really have anything go idle. They should just be collecting resources. Um, here we go. Is he trying to push deer? Nah, 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 nah. The the pushing deer on this level is a waste of time. We can't even keep we can't even keep the build going properly. Like there's no reason to be pushing gear here. It's it's way too much effort. They have extra pressure of 250 people watching them. Yeah, so true. So true. This wall is perfect though. If you can wall this and then wall to here and then here, it's like everything's protected except the gold. But then you go to gold later and you can just tower it. It's fine. Here we go. Uh cool. All right. So yeah, main main issue is just idle TC for both players at this this time. But yeah, pushing deer is it's not really worth the mental energy here. Did he see? He didn't wall his where he wanted to wall or uh, scout where he wanted to wall. 
You always want to scout to the edge because you want to know exactly where to wall. So instead of thinking about that, he's thinking about deer pushing for like two minutes. So this is why you don't really want to deer push here. You really need to be spending your mental energy on thinking a little bit more. Like he's he's doing these small walls, which or um yeah, the small walls are fine actually, but this this base would have been good to do base walls. Either one works though. Small walls are much easier to get up. So this is why you only like to have four on on berries because if you um, if you have so many on berries you can't really wall them properly. Th this guy's gonna go unlimited idle. Also, one tile away on the mill, one tile on the way or on the one tile away, and then you can just place like two palisades on each side with four on berries. So we're we're making here. Can I? Oh, there's no way to just select the buildings, right? Uh, I think it's 13. No, I'm selecting here. So we're making 12 instead of four palisades here, and that's that's a pretty big problem. Plus, these bills aren't even working, so we have too many on berries to do these kind of walls. We're like making a palisade here in the corner, which is unnecessary. So we want to definitely make fewer walls. I do like that he's he's gonna connect it here though. So I mean, okay, yeah, walling this in is actually kind of pointless if we're just gonna wall this and then wall to here, right? This wall's good. Yeah, walling to there, walling to there is fine. And then just securing this with a tower would be good. Okay. Nice. Wall one. No, 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 Genoese, we are, we're, this is, this is what we're doing here. This wall is perfect. Nice. So let's see. The, oh yeah, we have free horse collar now. The only thing is that we did make a bunch of farms before going up. So that's kind of a problem. So. Ideally, we'd have double bit. So double bit is is one thing that we want to get in right away with this. Um, here we go. So double bit. As soon as you go up, double bit and horse collar. So neither player getting their upgrades right away. It's kind of important. There we go. Ah, uh, yeah. So S3 went for a horse collar first. It's better to go double bit axe first because, well, it just affects your economy as, uh, right away. It's not a big thing, but we want to be thinking logically like that. These guys hear you? No, no, no. I mean, they might have to stream up, but it's not necessary. Here we go. And yeah, so these villagers, if they're not doing anything, they need to go to stragglers. Exactly, perfect. Um, so the only thing is that we didn't quite fully wall. Leaving the walls half open is kind of not great. This wall is fine, but yeah. Okay, we're on gold way too early. Basically, we needed to go quite a few more. The, the going to gold, we should be going even like villager 28 or so. Once we have a bunch of um, wood. So we're going two lumber camps at this point. Um, yeah, way, way too early. Basically, what needs to happen is fresh villagers need to go to wood or um, stragglers and they need to be making farms. So every 60 wood, they need to be making farms. Um, yeah, idle TC is the main issue for red side. But, but of course... You know, we just don't really need to um, be making a second lumber camp here. It's just more farms is is necessary. And yeah, good walls. Cool, cool, cool. And all right. So how's how's the wood spending? Ideally, we keep the wood basically at zero the entire game. So that's what we want to do. So both players just need to be spending. So these bills, farm, farm. This is going to be done, so these bills need to come and build farms. Uh, we're on gold now. Should be okay. Okay. Farms coming in. Very nice. And um, so this mining camp should have been placed here for efficiency. It's sort of offset and one tile away. It's not the most efficient mining camp. If you want to place it on this side, you just go down a tile and place it here. Then it's close to both of these tiles. But it is kind of hard to get the hang of the isometric... Um, view is sort of sort of hard to, to know. Uh, okay, so we're going to go for a market. I would have recommended just going for a barracks and then a stable and a blacksmith if we're going to go into knights, which is kind of kind of the play here, right? Okay. We've got a good farm count here going. That's nice to see. Um, so yeah, Robert, he's got way more food, but that's just because of not spending on villagers. That's uh, the main issue. But uh, only 10 farms. So going to go for the barracks now. And um, stable, stable. Would wall that off. That would be pretty good. 
There we go. Okay. Couple of villagers on the side here. Um, yeah, forgetting about the berry villagers is a classic. So as soon as the berries are getting low, thinking about the berry villagers and just sending them to a resource is very useful. Um, so yeah, hopefully the players remember getting to around 15 farms. 15 farms, 10 on gold, like 9 to 10 on gold on the way up. It's going to be perfect. Yeah, both players love their markets, but actually... You gotta go for the barracks and stable anyways if you're gonna go follow it up with knights, so it's better to just get that barracks stable. The market is not really necessary here. There we go. If you rely on the market too much, then it's gonna make bad habits as well. It can be good, but uh, yeah. Here we go. Nice. So, okay. Gold mining upgrade on the way up. Good. But he's making a farm instead of a black or a barracks. So there's the barracks. Well, he has enough for the barracks, that's so fine. Okay, good. Both players with their eco techs. Gold mining coming in. Looks like, oh, but we're queued behind a bunch of vills. Yeah, you really don't want to over queue vills like this. Basically, Robber's able to go up, but he's got a ton of vills in the queue. Hopefully, he cancels those because um, delaying the uptime. Ba basically, having the having this behind the villager queues is um, basically like you're floating the resources. Just because it doesn't show them here, they're still floating in the queues. There we go. He cancels them here. Good stuff. Um, great. So, there's one stable. We're gonna need a second stable. Hopefully he realizes that this stable's down so late that he's gonna need to use a different build for the second stable. There we go. It's being attacked. That's completely fine. There we go. Another stable there. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. And, let's see. Nine on gold. Uh, how many farms is that? 13 farms. A little bit low on the farm count, but since since the eco wasn't as smooth, we have enough food anyways. The only problem is no stables on this side. There's the second stable here. Oh, it's like almost up on time. Slightly late, but that's, that's pretty good. There's one stable. It would have been really nice to wall this off, though. The way that this is structured is it's going to be a little sketchy. Walling, walling this would be very nice, though. Honestly, he could be full walled, walling like this, and then in front, or or even just to the edge is fine. Okay, the gold is just exposed. Do we have knights right away? Looks like knights right away. Beautiful. Yeah, bloodlines would have been nice to have in before reaching up, but it's fine. Knight is on its way, and this is the importance of being walled. So, Red never got his walls down. There we go. We're gonna go for a third stable. All right, fair enough. Yeah, with this economy. And if you can get this walled, is that walled? Nah, it's gonna be close. He's going forward with this one knight. We're up just a little bit late. I think it's, I think it's close. This guy's gonna get killed probably, but if this can just get walled, right? If this can just get walled. There we go. Knights in the queue. Look at, look at all the knights in the queue. Amazing. Although, I mean, we do like to have some build production, but uh, okay. Husbandry is probably not the first thing you want to click. You definitely want to get uh, numbers out. You want to get units. Husbandry is good like on the way to the opponent's base or so. There we go. All right. How's the production here? Ooh, yellow forgot production. So de definitely needs to have 100% production on these stables the whole time. So he for forgot production. Robert will never forget production because he's got everything uh, queued in the stables. Although this... Oh, yeah, even this one. Honestly... Red's gonna have more numbers here soon. The only problem is he didn't wall. Like the the gold is just not walled, so that's the problem, right? That's the biggest problem here. Obviously, fighting fighting four with one is not gonna go so well. Um, he will have units coming though. There we go. Yellow's gonna get clean, but more knights are coming in. More knights are coming in. Just shows that little bit cleaner early game makes the biggest difference makes a huge difference and uh well not creating any vills is going to be a bit of a problem here um still has more knights in the queue but well that's going to be the end of the night production right pretty much there we go three stables well it can be okay though um on this economy, you can't really support three stables, but we've got three stables. I hope he just gets his walls up and then goes and attacks. 
But look, look, yellow can't be killed. Look, look at how solid this is. This is, this is a lot closer to what I was envisioning. This, this kind of base and this kind of economy. Obviously, red's map was a lot harder to wall though, so that's uh, that's one of the issues. And look, getting plus two armor just before going in, it's gonna be great. So what needed to happen is we needed to rewall or um, or repair. It's tricky, but uh, yeah, you always have to react. Once the knights are in, once the knights are in, everything everything is gonna fall, right? This is the freestyle part. Yeah, I mean, knight spam is basically gonna be the best strategy from here, anyways. Uh, I think Robert's main issue is just the unit, uh, the villager production, especially early. So maybe he needs to learn some hotkeys or something like that. Could be the issue. Just, um, it's really hard to play the game if you don't have hotkeys. And that's, that tends to be, when people idle the TZ a lot, tends to be one of the biggest issue is just, it's so annoying to queue villagers if you're constantly clicking. But anyways, this one is over. We'll see if um, S3 goes for some TCs now. It's the perfect timing to just, oh, he's even gonna go for monks forward, nice. Yeah, taking off of gold. Siege workshop uh, on this side is kind of weird to siege from there. Just siege from the front. Like, no need to be super sneaky. Uh, I find people tend to try and be way too sneaky, and they just they just need to go in the front, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Never can never make fun of low level players. Like, there's so many things that you need to do to play competently. Um, and so, just because I can execute it perfectly, doesn't doesn't mean anything. I like the counter attack here. Um. Look at that, TC. If this, if these knights discover that, if they go straight there, they can reach it. Okay. Some spears. Yeah, he's gonna go into spears. I mean, fair enough, right? O honestly, that's the play. He definitely needs like two more barracks though. A couple more barracks, and it's gonna go a long way. Yeah, overqueuing is usually a sign of just not using hotkeys, because it's like, oh, I don't wanna ever have to deal with this again because it just takes too long to like click the building, click the stuff. It's too annoying, so yeah. Hockey's gonna be good. There's one barracks. And um, here we go. Oh, is is Yellow gonna be able to react? Is he gonna react? He's, he's worried about something over here. Red, oh, this might be huge. But he forgot one one upgrades. Oh no. Oh, this could be huge, guys. This could be huge. This could be absolutely huge. Without armor upgrades, it's so hard to chill under the TC though. But man, if red just goes into the back, if he goes back here, it's possible. But he's gonna, it's gonna take it easy. All right, kind of sketchy. I mean, this army does beat this, so I don't think he knows it's here though. Oh, see some stuff. Yeah, I think leaving was the mistake, but um, yeah, armor upgrades are super important on the knights. There we go. <laughs> Siege workshop's chilling up here. Okay, Rax does need to be. Yeah, I mean breaking another hole in here is kind of kind of weird, right? Um, okay, we've got armor coming in. There we go. Those two knights will probably get cleaned up. Love to see pikemen. Honestly, if Red can just go for Pikeman and make a forward siege workshop, he can make something happen. Because when you're behind in eco, you have you can't add TCs yourself. You have to make a bunch of military and kill your opponent. That's, that's basically the only way. But um, yeah, Pikeman and forward siege would be very good right now. Because look at the army count. There's only six knights. This this is Yellow's whole army. He switched to boom mode. There's the Pikeman upgrade. Beautiful. Um. Red has an angle for sure. Yeah, exactly. 100%. Yellow's, he's making army now, but guess what? He is making knights into pikes. If you ever stop military production, then it's uh, a little bit tricky. Oh, he doesn't know his garrison hotkey. <laughs> there we go, he figured it out. Nice. All oh, the knights are gonna dominate all these bills. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. There we go. Look at this. Oh, but at home, we have enough pikes. They just need to be patrolled. Uh, I think he right clicked on uh, one of these and they're gonna try and go for that one guy But they're mean in the meantime getting wrecked So it just shows the importance of patrolling instead of just right clicking and Okay, so 
some pikes running around. Oh, the monk is not going to get the damage. Oh, this is really pretty good for red, honestly. Don't count them out. Don't count them out, guys. Look at this. These knights are going to get cleaned. And, and what is what is yellow's army? Yellow's army is just a bunch of knights that are going to die to pikes. Oh, beautiful. Oh, and they're in. Yellow's got no more gold income. He's got like a bajillion monks queued. But one of the monks is going to die. Oh, let's go. This game just got interesting. All right. Look at this. I mean, there's gold income back here, but still. Yellow's economy is idling the whole time. Doesn't matter if he has double the economy. His idol is... He has 16% worker efficiency. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. You definitely don't want to lose a... Oh, yellow with zero luck. Zero luck. And red going full military. This is giving me some movable vibes. Just full military. Doesn't even care about economy at all. There we go. Honestly, that's kind of all you need on this level is... you. If you get a good opening down, if you can just learn my opening a little bit better, and then go full military and castle age, man, it's gonna go a long way. Just work on the, the opening though. Okay, this is this is kind of unfortunate. But, uh, oh, but the, actually the monastery went down. Dang, whoa. Okay, actually, Red's gonna lose all of his knights. Yeah, it's, he could have probably fought that. Five versus three, even low HP, but anyways, fine. All right. When you make military, you don't want to have them chilling, though. Basically, if you're going to make military, it needs to be in a good spot. Like, pikemen can be defending the farms. Knights can be running forward. Those are the, those are the things that need to be done. Or knight, or pikes can come forward. Like, either way. But we never want to make military and just chill. So, should be good. There we go. Red gets stronger the more damage they take. So true. That's what it seems like. There we go. Yeah, yellows, yellows knights are definitely of a higher quality but pikemen still killed him the main thing is well yellow has the better eco look he's got wheelbarrow he's got bow saw he's got like a bajillion more units um so red is gonna need to make something happen here he's gonna need to get some big raids in he's gonna need to take a big fight like if yellow suicides all of his units into these pikes red still can win still has a chance right Bosaw for zero woodcutters is irrelevant. That that's kind of true, honestly. That's kind of true. Um, Siege workshop I'm gonna get taken out for free. That's what we like to see. These guys are getting healed. But uh, oh oh, that's gonna be a good catch if he sees it. He's not gonna see it though, is he? Okay. Unfortunate. Ay ay ay. Well. I mean, okay, all, all these guys will get cleaned, but losing two knights is kind of not great. There we go. Good catch for yellow instead. Yep. That's how it goes. That's how it goes. All right. Spikes will clean it up, though. There we go. No problems here. Honestly, if red can take out this monastery, that's two, two relics gone. Would be a pretty good uh, use of his units but um yeah yellow being on two tcs is definitely helping him a lot red being on basically zero tcs is uh is hurting but he's going full military so with full military it's possible i think if red just sends everything forward now takes a good fight it can be very strong i would love to see red prioritize getting plus two armor on the knights as well who are we cheering? Not cheering for anyone, just just, uh, just casting. All right, pikes need to get in on this fight though. There we go. Attack. Yeah, I think red needs to learn patrol. I think he's always right clicking to attack and then the guys just don't attack because they, they're trying to go after the, the unit that he clicks and they don't attack the, the random units. Um, this was good though, clearing this out. Can't go wrong. There we go. Nice. Yeah. Probably needs to bring everything together though. 
Oh, oh, yellow messed up his micro. The monks, oh, the monks are chilling. The monks are gonna get dominated here. But yeah, see, look, uh, the monks are not even dying because not using patrol, just right clicking. No way he gets a conversion, right? He gets a conversion. <laughs> it happens. It happens. All right. Um, so if red uses a select all military and just attacks yellow right now, it would be very good. This TC is great. This TC on the gold. I'm gonna cover this gold very nicely. Um, yeah, these eight pikemen down by the barracks is, they're just wasted re units. Oh, this is gonna be so big. He's gonna get in through the overchop. Let's go. It's too bad only three knights are in and they're not doing anything. No. What's going on? I don't even know. Oh, well, yellow gets away. All right. But he's still going to lose a few units here. Yeah, yellow kind of just needs to spend his res, but, well, that's just how it goes, right? It's hard. There's a lot of things. He's now going to focus on dealing with these knights instead of spending his res. Everything just stops. Everything just stops. So, yeah. Bosaw is in. Uh, prioritizing plus two attack is not really good. It's way better to get armor on knights so they can run into the TC effectively, but it's whatever. Attack's gonna help with killing the stables. Uh, that's something. This is so sketchy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Neither player sees. Okay, uh, yellow has no production. If he loses his stables, he has no production. He's gonna go imp into GG, basically. If he doesn't get some production down. Red adding bills is why I'm supporting him. <laughs> yep. Well, Pikeman coming in for, for yellow now, but is is it gonna be too little too late? We'll see. Imp into Halves, I mean, that could be good, but if he loses his barracks here, that could also be nothing. Okay, this guy is doing something. I don't even know how you get your guys to do that, but uh, anyways. All right, all right. Red still with 50. Red with 50% of the bills, but yellow with 50% of the worker efficiency. So actually, not looking too bad. Can you imagine if Red had a Siege Workshop forward and like two rams to push the TC? Can you imagine? The biggest issue is if he just throws all of his units onto the TC because of no armor. Like that's, that's the main issue. All this unit, all these units can't do anything without siege here. They're just gonna die to the TC for free. There it is. Nice. Beautiful, beautiful. There's the barracks. Oh, stone walls, stone walls. All right, all right, fair enough. Game isn't strange. This is 800 Elo. They're both playing good for their level. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 800 ELO, anything can happen. It's actually exciting watching this level because you don't really know what's gonna happen. There we go. Um, all right, so yellow's imp, but he, he'll have nothing. Like it's imp into nothing. Uh, well, he'll be able to make halb, but whatever. Whatever. He doesn't have any units. Oh, these are in now though. Oh, but the the eight pikemen from earlier. Oh no, they're they're healed. Maybe it must be a different eight pikemen. They're gonna clean these up. These knights have no relic bonus. The eight pikemen will be enough here for sure. Oh, unless two of them are just not attacking the whole time. That's uh yeah, it happens. All right, that's what happens when you don't patrol and you right click. Then half of your guys just don't fight, and then you lose the fight that you should win. But it's all good. Oh, he's getting plate barding for his three guys. All right. Nice. We see some rams. There it is. I have like two plans at 1850, and if both play all, I just look for the map and Civ weaknesses. Yeah. Well, that's a lot more plans than most people. Ooh, the halves are going to eat these knights. Two halves. Yeah, you pretty much never want to just leave your guys attacking a random building because, oh no, we're losing all the knights. All the knights are dead. Oh boy. Oh boy. Hey, Bonos. Oh, a tower on the gold. Yo, that's a sick play. Yellow's about to have zero gold income. It's too bad he has a lot in the bank, but uh, you know, 
Zero gold income. There we go. Look at that. Look at this little siege push happening here. Beautiful. Um, it's kind of hard to deal with Halb, though. Lithuanian Halbs don't have Blast Furnace, though, so honestly, Franks could just go their own Halb if they wanted to. Why not, right? Even just Pikemen, right? Here we go. Look at this. <laughs> Yellow saving his res to go Imp again. He's going Wonder Age. There we go. Nice. Um. Yeah, we just got uh, pretty good military here. Need even more. It's it's super hard because like Franks don't really have an obvious answer to Halbs here. Pretty much just have to make your own um, pikes. You can overwhelm with with knights, but it's not uh, not necessarily the greatest. There we go. It's a race to build a wonder. Yeah, yeah. Look at this. Well, he's definitely in the better position, but stuff can happen. Like y yellow has, oh, he has armor as well. Uh, it's gonna be. Well, oh, he doesn't have the final armor. Oh yeah, no, no, they. They have no, no, they don't have blast furnace or the final armor. Yeah, yeah, lith halves are kind of, kind of trash, right? They just move fast. Um. They they get the unique tech, but that's all. Here we go. Look at the the rams are ramming, ramming away. Uh, nice, Red got some bills in the queue. There we go. There we go. Oh, okay, well, Red sees this. Will the TC eventually go down? That's the question. Rello ever really use this market? Uh, not so much, it looks like. Not so much. But um, this is where Having an idea of what units to make and just making them is really key. Like I think Yellow just doesn't really know what he wants to do with his resources. So, yeah, there's the Halbs, but where's the power unit? He could make Cavalier. He already got armor on them. He could make Cavalier. If he was on stone, he could make um, Lightus. Ideally, Lightus, right? Be pretty good. And, um, yeah. Basically... If Red can fix his villager production, he's he's got the military spam down. Like he, he can do the military spam a lot better than the villager production. Villager production is where he needs to work on. Um, for yellow, what were the major weaknesses here? Um, the build wasn't perfect, but still, that's not the biggest issue. He did have a bit of idle TC in the early game. Major focus is yeah, spending the resources. So, Red's having troubles actually getting the resources in because of not producing enough um, villagers. And Yellow's mainly not spending the resources. So, making enough production buildings and just, just making units. Like, there's no reason to have zero units in the queue, right? Scouting too. Well, scouting comes later. Honestly, scouting's not that big of a deal. Spending your resources is more important. They both got tons of damage with the Knights build. Oh, definitely. The, the opening was still pretty good um with some more practice it's gonna go a long way like this is not the kind of thing that you can just do one time and just have it be good see look red is using stand ground micro to get his guys to a target the individual units but that's that's like not worth the the time even on high level like i would never use stand ground micro to target individual bills i'd just like let them go at it and do something else and that's kind of what he's doing here actually wait is this red is this raid gonna this raid is getting a little bit uh, too much value, actually. This level just auto scout. Well, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Nobody really knows what they're doing, so it's not the intel that you gather doesn't really give you anything useful. Just, just focus on your own macro. That's that's what I want people to understand. Is it's don't try and outbrain your opponent on this level. Just macro. Just like play well yourself. 
don't try and do the anti-meta strategy. I know it's uh, it's fun, but yeah. Oh yeah, yellow pushed deer, true. Yeah, he shouldn't be pushing deer here. Power defense is honestly fine against the halves here. It might, might be good, actually. I'd love to see a castle. Frank's with the cheap castle, but uh, well, yellow kind of has a lot. The only thing that's holding yellow back is he's not spending his res. If he's spending his res, if he converts all of this into units, then it's over. But actually, a garrison TC here can can fight the helps, I think. Especially if Fletching comes in. But Red's push is starting to fall apart here. I think this one's over. I think he's going to call it pretty soon. Because uh, these helps, they have arson. <laughs> they can do what swordsmen wish they could do. They can kill everything. So this TC is kind of weak. Helps can probably take down the TC. Well, they can. 100% they can. They take down everything. Oh, we got Onagers coming in. Dude, Yellow is gaming. Doesn't get Siege Onager as Lith, though, unfortunately. But he has the res for Siege Onager if he, uh, if he did have it. That's pretty epic. Halb Onager on Arabia, let's go. That's the way to go. I've lost TCs to Halbs, it feels so bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, it can happen. I mean, in the late game, you basically can raid with Hussar, but then if your opponent's raiding with Hussar and you and then you raid with Halbs, it's hard to actually clean up Halbs with Hussar. So if there's like 20 Halbs raiding your farms and all you have is Hussar, the Halbs can do a lot of damage, right? They can be pretty good. Um, yeah, look, there we go. See, this is what Yellow needed to do earlier. Make a bunch of production, make some units. He lost his two stables in the front, and then he just didn't make stables. He made like one stable back here, but not using it. So select all military production building hotkeys, very useful. Then you can, um, yeah, select them all and then queue units very quickly. There we go. <laughs> Red making CA. Wait, yeah, that's kind of insane. That's he, he heard the Frank CA was good from Sam, and then he was like, okay, I guess I'll do it. Um, but yeah, this this one is completely over. All, all Yellen needs to do is click the Paladin button and send them in. See, red is, or yellow is just not committing with his units. He's going for the slow siege push against nothing. This is fine if the opponent has military, but if the opponent is basically dead, you just, you just send them all in. Oh, look at the castle, the one villager castle. Oh wait, no, that's a redville. The negative one villager castle. Oh, he's gonna kill his own foundation if he's not careful. If he's not careful. All right. Bada boom. I think Red should be giving this up pretty soon here. It is more than over. The get out of my game castle. Yeah, exactly. When that comes down, yeah, GG. Jeez. All right, so let's take a look at the statistics here. Um, here we go. Yeah, just yellow got super far ahead. The, the opening was a bit more smooth. Just creating villagers. Creating villagers is very important. That's the main thing. Just super far behind. If you do lose your vills, you do need to be super aggressive in attacking. How fast are they playing? Yeah, so both players probably not playing with enough hotkeys, pretty much. Um, that's one of the biggest issues here. Just adding in hotkeys slowly, slowly. And yeah, learning, just practicing in single player. It's going to go a long way. So yeah. Yeah, respect to the players. GG's. It's been fun. If both players adapted to the strong side of the other, they'd be 1,100 quick. Yeah, exactly. Both players playing completely differently. It's You see a lot of variation in players on lower levels because, I mean, if you think about it, you're not really learning every skill all at once. You can learn a bit of skills here and there, but you tend to focus on one thing that works. So if one player feels like, oh, creating villagers... I get a big economy and then I win later and that's working for me. So then they keep doing that. But then one player is like, oh, 
I just made a bunch of military, sent it to the Mahone space, and I won the game. Okay, so I'm just going to focus on making military now. And then you get people who are who learn to play the game in a completely different way. Yeah, being a balanced player can be good, but actually, it's not the only way to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. more vill production. I, I mean, yeah, you can always improve constantly producing villagers, constantly producing military. I think just really grinding it against the AI or just even no AI, just you're basically grinding against yourself, grinding the build out, making sure that you have hotkeys for everything, like select all military, select all TCs, select or uh, creating villagers, Stuff like that. Selecting your stables. Select all stables. Very good one. Create knight. That's what you want to do. Would be fun to see the same with 1k5 players. Do we have any 1k5s in chat? I'm willing to go through with 1k5. This will be 1500. So this is like if... Yeah, Sebastian and uh, Robert uh, practiced for like six months. This is just a look into what they can be. This will be the... Uh, this will be basically a look into the future. You may not understand it because you're low elo, but it's actually the perfect play. Lewis at 2k6. <laughs> That's so funny. There we go. All right. Anything at my current elo or above is good at the game. <laughs> yeah, that's so true, though. <laughs> all right. All right. Um... Okay, so both players are like 1,500 roughly. We've got a Bulgarians versus Malians. Wow. Both players playing some interesting civs here. And so, yeah. They don't have to follow it exactly. Obviously, the, the build is more of just a... Um, it's a guideline. It's not something you have to follow exactly every time. So how would we wall this base? This is an easy wall to base. Uh, it's it's not immediately obvious if you don't think about it, but I think walling to the top of this hill and then down to the TC. You control this hill down to the TC. And then we go on this hill to here to the berries and go here. So he has a wall like this and a wall like this. He's got this wood line. You can't really tower. It's so far back, right? So It's fine. Like I mean, it could be tower, but having bills back here, you just... We could make military at some point. Um, so, yeah, I would love to see these very functional walls. For blue, gold is ugly. Gold is ugly. He's got ba gold back here, though. I mean, if he wanted to be very cool, he could wall here, wall to the edge here, and then, like, basically walling like this, and then just take the back gold. That would honestly be so fine, right? Or he could tower this. Or he could just wall to the gold here, and here, and then here. And that's completely fine, too. And then I'd probably still wall to the edge. Like, he could connect this. Either here or here. Like, they're both kind of the same. If you wall like this, if men -at arms get back here and your vills are over here, he's getting in. So if you wall like this, his men -at arms are hitting this. Okay, you just have enough time to react and get your vills here. So, yeah, this is a bit better in terms of controlling space. But this is better if he actually attacks you with something you need to react. So the tighter your walls are, the easier it is to reinforce them. So that's why it's important to make pretty tight walls. See, Red's making the walls too far out. He's trying to secure this wood line, which maybe is okay, but that means he has to go here, and he has to go here, and he has to go here. Whereas walling like this is going to be much more functional. These houses also don't do anything for him right now. So he should have put these houses here or, like, on this side. Or, or even walling towards here with the houses. But sending a vill all the way out here and then all the way back here is not what he wants to do. Even even like putting the houses here closer to the berries can be better. Because then you can use those to wall against men at arms. If your houses are out here, then you can't really use them as part of a wall right away. Awkward wood line. Yeah, so where did Blue get his houses? Yeah, he went here. Okay, yeah, so he's going to wall like this and he's just going to use the back gold. I like it. Yeah. Honestly, okay, this, this wall's too big. Again. So this is perfect to demonstrate. So he is making 19 plus a house. What does he need? He needs one, two, three, four, maybe five, six. He's making 19 walls instead of six. Plus, plus the house. So you can see how walling this is useless because it's just empty space. 
You just make them very tight. Two here. Maybe you, you make one after that's done. Maybe you put the house here. And you wall like this. That's completely fine. No need to go this far out. Especially this early. It's it's not good on your economy. If you need to make bigger walls, you make them later. We're going to go two wood lines. So nine on wood, hopefully. 800 lows are walling better. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's... It's hard to really say, but yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, nice. He's, he's just going to go to the back. That's fine. With this gold back here, it's it's completely fine. Yeah, red's wall. Like this, you can you can see that this wall just looks really bad, right? Oh, like that's just too big. It, it was okay, but here and here. He's going to watch the VOD later and he'll realize, okay, I didn't need to make like an additional... 26 or probably probably like an additional 30 30 extra palisade walls which 30 times yes. 3 is 90 and but also the villager work time makes it more like 200 or something extra resources that we're spending into the walls that are necess unnecessary he doesn't need to take two wood lines here as well i think he's too too dead set on taking wood two wood lines it's not necessary one wood line's all you need if he was going to wall to two wood lines, then he should he should at least c control the stone. It's just going to be better. But yeah, two, two wood lines is unnecessary. Both players going to have it, though. Okay. Yeah, Waka's up a little bit late, though. Honestly, like, 24 up is, is pushing it. It's pushing it. Like, 21 up, it makes a lot more sense for a standard game. And he's getting everything. Nice. He's going to have it all. Beautiful. Look at this. Farms in. Perfect timing. He's not going to have too much idle. So I think red is probably, you could say, building. Like, got the better build here. We did get a black uh, barracks here. Honestly, like, it's not in the greatest spot. It should have been at least allow for one layer of farms, right? Should have been a little bit more forward. But look, look. Yeah, look at the spending. He's going to keep that. He's going to keep that wood down. There we go. So, yeah, I mean, FC is not as good, though. FC just gives you a worse economy. You might get a few nights out earlier. He's not doing FC, but, um, yeah. But you can see how going up a little bit later gives you more resources. Because you have more villagers working on the way up, you actually just get more permanent resources in your bank. But, obviously, look, all of his farms are coming down all at once, which means they're kind of late. Ideally, you get up a bit earlier and then add them in one by one. It's going to give you a much smoother economy. So, also, in Castle Age, or, like, once these expire, they're all, all going to expire at the same time. And that's going to be an economic disaster. Disaster. I, I do like the shape of Waka's walls, like how he walled, but he, he made too many walls on this top side. That's the main issue. Other than that, like, these walls were good. I like it. And kind of same with red. I don't think he should go for this because it's too big of an investment. He's investing like an extra 200 wood just so that he can take this wood line. Those 200 wood could be spent on even like a barracks and, and um, skirms in an, in an actual game. Or just, I mean, in this, just more farms earlier. It's fine. Oh, he's a bit more of an artist. There we go. This game is going to get going here. Oh, blacksmith first. Okay. I mean, stable comes up slower, so you generally want to get the stable up first. This knowledge matters in the um, on arena. For say, say that you are going to go stable and blacksmith, you want to get the stable going first because it takes longer to build. If you're just doing plus two, I'm gonna push those uh, deer in. That's fine. That's fine. Nice. It's it's whatever. They didn't open with the deer push. I think it's good to practice not having deer. I think it's good for you. So that you can manage... Like, you learn to manage your economy a lot better if there's no deer. The market, the building that takes the longest to build. Yeah, it does. Markets take... Um, 60 seconds to build. Which is why you use two villagers to build it. And then it takes slightly less than 50. Because you have 50 seconds. Um... Because two bills take 50 seconds to build. So you need to use two bills to build the market. And for these buildings, I think it's... Is it 40 seconds? Or is it 50? It might be 50. I can't even remember, actually. 
What elo? This is fifteen hundred. In terms of says I'm learning leaning towards Molly and having an edge here. Yeah, well we'll see. We'll see. Malians have camels. Bulgarians can make cheaper upgrades though. University, yeah, university takes a while to build as well. Exactly. So for imperial age, you want to get that started. It, say that you're you're trying to go up to imp, and you're playing arena. You go in, you go university first, and then you make your siege workshop. If you didn't go for a monastery. About fifteen hundred. Then why do these guys look ten times better than me? Well, they're playing under a sort of structured opening. Uh, I wish I could chat. Yeah, yeah, anything, exactly. Anything is fine. It was just it was just the opening that was I wanted them to do this. Yeah, yeah, now it's fine. Exactly, Waka's got it. Um look, but neither player even idled. This idol is just whatever. Neither player idled at all. Their economy is is really good right now. Both up at the same time, yeah. But you can see how Altamar's economy is kinda just better at this point. Although he does have the Malian um gold mining. Right? Yeah, gold mining on the way up. And, well, Waka forgot his gold mining upgrade, right? Yeah. Altamar's gonna be turboing ahead now. Absolutely turboing. Waka did get a uh, wheelbarrow, though, so that can help. How's his gold? He's got 11 on gold, one too many on gold, so he's gonna have a little bit more gold to work with. He's gonna go three stable. That's pretty all in, but I'm here for it. I'm here for it. That's for sure. Um, yeah, Waka's gonna have the better food economy just because of Wheelbarrow. But obviously, Altamar is gonna have a much better gold economy. There we go, he gets the gold mining upgrade here. But that, that definitely should have been in earlier. And he forgot Bloodlines, so Bloodlines coming in. There's the 1-1. One, one. So there's lots of stuff you gotta afford. Yep. There we go, both players up at the same time. We got two stable. Yeah, knights is fine to open with. You make a few knights, and then if your opponent's going knights, you start to make some camels as the Malians here. For sure. Um Yeah. They can both make um they can both make TCs here. Or well, actually only Altamar can make TCs. So th this is the thing. Waka can't make TCs because he made this third stable. So he's more all in on that. Also, Malians just get the wood discount. What Altamar should be doing here is making TCs right now. Or like at least one TC. While while there's still that advantage of knights not being terrorizing him. Would be a perfect time. So he's just going to float this res. But you can see how he could have two additional TCs. If he was thinking, like, one TC on the stone could be good. Maybe, like, having it on the deer and the, the gold could be too good too, though. Honestly, Ultimar's expansion is pretty trash, having both golds here. Um, although, Waka's also is kind of kind of tricky. Okay, who's going to win this fight? The guy with more knights will win. Okay. Let's see how both players approach this. Yeah, it's a pretty even game now. Now both players can just play from Castle Age. This is going to be interesting. I would do one stable, one monastery, and one TC. Well, one of everything is not very good, though. You want to you wanna commit. Commit to something. Two stables... Two stables with a monastery is pretty good. Um, just three TCs with the two stables also works sometimes. If you go three stables, it's like, well, you better be making a lot of military, and that's what he is. Blue's with a lot of military here. He's gonna go for this too. Yeah, blue. If blue ever adds a TC here, he's making a huge mistake. Uh, unless it's like way later in the game, he needs to go full military here. Ooh. Okay. Uh, husbandry for red, though, so he's just gonna get away. Husband this is just shows, like, husbandry's real important. <laughs> Got it, three monasteries, yeah. There we go, there's the second TC for red. And he can't really afford to get another TC. Well, just because he added farms. Honestly, if he didn't add these farms, he could be on three TCs. I think three TC would have been okay. But he sees that there's three... Oh, he didn't scout properly. He should see that there's three stables here. He just never attacked. You know, like, you should always attack your opponent's base so you know what they're doing. He can infer that it's three stables because Blue has more knights than him. But, or, I mean, he had a lot of knights. Actually, the fact that Blue only has the same number of knights is kind of questionable. It just shows, on that economy, you can't really afford three stables. Which is why I said in the build, two stables. You need to be up 
earlier for it. Yeah, no bone saw because he's trying to go three stable knights. That's the thing. That's just a fake palisade wall. It doesn't even block. <laughs> Both these palisades do nothing. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, Waka's got to get something done though. He's going full military, but he's not really able to keep three stables running. So that's the thing. This setup is for two stables. If you're if you're up later, you can go three, but two is two is kind of better for this. And you can see how Altamar just went two stables and he's booming. He's chill booming. He doesn't need to do damage. I think he should be on a third TC though. Look, look, look. He's got three bills in each queue. Imagine if he had a set another TC and those and he had two bills in each. Gonna be much better. He could have easily had another TC. So kind of a mistake. But he's still ahead. Okay. Uh, yeah, Waka needs to like win the game with this aggression. The the moment he makes the TC, he loses. Like this is way too late. Way too late. Anyways, I'm sure both players are gonna watch the VOD after this. They'll get some good good ideas. There we go. One TC, but no aggression. Exactly, exactly. You can't do that. You go one TC, you better be aggressive. He's he's getting baited. Right here, he needs to go counterattack now. He needs to go in and do damage. Not defend against the dude who's just harassing, who's just going to run. Exactly. Like, okay. Wow, he's pushed this back. Okay, he got a conversion. But guess what? You know what he didn't do? Do anything at the opponent's base, and Red is just free moving at home. So red is completely fine to lose a few units or whatever, as long as blue's army doesn't come forward. So, yep. Waka didn't earn his right to make a second TC. Exactly, he needs to earn it. He needs to go kill some vills first. Then maybe try and expand the economy. Okay, okay. Good conversions though, honestly. Okay, numbers are good. He just needs to go do something with it. Look, like, if he just gets everything together, Bulgarians can just get the cheaper iron casting and just go. Like, the longer he just chills, the worse his position is getting. That's sketchy. Blue should be coming forward. I would never go for that TC now. If you're going to go for that TC, you, it has to be while you're, like, baiting Blue's army up here. Right now, Blue should be coming forward and killing this. But But he's chilling. Okay, here he is. Here he is. That's like a minute too late. He waited for uh, heals, but if you're going to heal, just just send everything forward. Split off the weak ones. Send them back. It's fine. Okay, go. Go. He has no scouting either, so he doesn't even know. He realizes that the two golds are here, though, so he should, he should realize it, that he needs to be there. He doesn't trust in his army. Wait, red went for... Red went for attack before armor. Okay. This will be good. Man, go scout. Scout the gold. There, there, do it. Attack. Yeah, Bulgarians not having iron casting here is kind of questionable, though. It's pretty cheap for, for that. Oh, yeah, here we go. This is where Waka can win it. Red making a big mistake trying to get this TC in, the like, a kind of a horrible timing. He knows that Blue had a bigger army because he got pushed away. And he knows that Blue should be counterattacking, like, coming forward. So why make the riskiest TC in the world? Okay, let's attack with the full army instead of half the army. Yep. No need to attack the TC. Like, blue will dominate this fight, though. Red should never take this fight. Red is going to lose this game, guys. Red is going to lose this game right here. Right now. Boom! Half the army gone. All right. Don't chase it, though. Just, just go yeah, just go kill the TC. No need to chase the army. No need to chase the army. It's just bait. It's just bait. You're wasting time. Go kill this TC. Don't. Go home. Oh, he's going to castle drop. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Oh, I didn't even realize he was on stone. Okay. The the, the uh, stone TC makes a lot more sense. Oh, is he going to realize this though? Oh, that's a minute of not doing anything in the back. Okay. This is sick though. This is sick. Why is he splitting off random units here? Oh, those are the weak ones. Okay. Good. Okay. This is, this is crazy. Blue's got way more units, though. Yo, red might be dead. This is how you can do it. This is how you do it. If you're going to go 1 TC, you have to build up to aggression. And blue just built up to this big, chonky castle drop. And red, he, he needed to be 3 TCs earlier, because then it would have um, paid off earlier. But he needed to realize that Waka was on 1 TC, making full knights there for a while. 
And he needed to be making a counter unit. He needed to be making not so many knights. He needed to be making camels. That's for sure. Four stables. Or no, no. That's three stables. The barracks, the barracks tripped me up a little while. I was looking at this little circle thing that's on top. Um, dude, red is dead. Look at this play. Honestly, a follow-up Krepost? That's why you choose Bulgarians. You can get a follow-up Krepost here. It's stirrups! Okay. And this is why you need to not take bad fights and you need to make sure that you're making the right units. Honestly, if Red, if you're gonna go for three, he should have been three TC. Like two TC is just not really good usually. Quaka is in a dominating position now. Surfs before iron casting, I mean, it is the better upgrade, but yeah, I mean, iron casting for Bulgarians is pretty cheap. I mean, it's I guess it's only 60 food discount. Or no, 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 wait, no, it's 110 food discount. It's a, it's a lot. It's a lot of a discount. He's one TC now. Well, yeah, and and perfect timing. Just he adds the third TC, and uh, well, he added the TC. What I think I think Waka added the TC while he was castle dropping, right? Yeah, with these bills. This is how you do it. This is what Red needed to do. He needed to attack and add the TC at the same time. Because then the opponent is distracted. Then you get the TC up and it's no problem. So Red was too late adding the TC. He should have added it like kind of on, on Castle Age anyways. But um, sick play. Sick play. Look at this. The camels are strong though. That's a lot of camels. But well, conics are gonna be conics are gonna be pretty okay here. Look at this. Honestly, Waka just needs to drop a castle here to force a bad fight again, and it's over. Also, yeah, just just taking this TC, right? Altamar needed to realize both of his golds are in the middle of the map in a trash position, and he needed to never let the Bulgarians forward. Basically, he should have had camels, which would have forced Bulgarians into going pikes. Then it's a little tricky, um, but yeah, maybe going towards a castle a little bit earlier. Um, maybe he just makes his own pikes in that situation. It's kind of tricky, but I think Bulgarian knight pike is, is always going to be good here. Honestly, like, Ultimar could have played Crossbowman to fight the knight pike. Towards crossbowman timing could be pretty good. Or just playing crossbowman, right? Red is imping. Yeah, okay, okay, I see. Wait a sec, heavy camel could be the difference. Oh, but Waka's adding in pikes now. He knows, he knows that pikeman is the play. This castle's really good though. Okay, so, yo, Red is so sneaky. Does he know about this? Oh, he knows about it too. Okay. This was never gonna be good though, but okay. I'm scared, but maybe there's a chance. Ballistics for one castle, I mean, it's fine. I don't think it's bad. It's gonna be killing quite a few camels with ballistics. I think it's worth. Blue late on the pike count. Yeah, yeah. But he's so far ahead now that it's sort of okay. Um, he could go all in Castle Age, which will give him enough military to fight. But still kind of hard to fight under the castle. No fletching for Red, though. Yeah, he needs to get walls down here to, and then put the, the traps here. So actually, this castle will go down. I think it's open. I think there's a spot here next to the stable that's also open. Yeah, I think there's still a tile in here. We can't really see it, but yeah. Where's heavy camel? Heavy camel? Why are we getting plate barding? Heavy camel's way more important. Heavy camel's like, why you go imp? Oh no, oh no, oh no. And... This is so sketchy. Heavy camel's such a good upgrade though. You get armor if you're gonna go for a like, cavalier, but heavy camels a huge increase on regular camels, so that's the priority. Here we 
go. Blue going in. Second Treb's gonna be in. This is uphill. Blue can repair it. Or he's gonna give it up. Oh, he's just gonna make another one back. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. There's the heavy camel click. Yeah, the only problem is just no eco. This is just a classic case of just trying to be too greedy. Waka definitely could have done a little bit stronger aggression, like earlier aggression. But it could have um it could have caught Ultimar off guard. Like it could have caught Red off guard because he wasn't doing such heavy aggression. Ultimar might not have realized that it was one TC for a while. Two TC is safer versus one TC all in. Uh, I don't know. I think three TC can still be good You because you, you just get the, the boom going. Like two TC, it's just you don't have enough military and then it's not worth it because your economy's not that far ahead. It just feels like you don't have enough of each. Okay, so yeah, pikemen are very hard to fight. Like This composition is really hard for um, Malians now. I think you probably need like a Beto or something. Dude, pay attention. He's taking your gold. Nah. No, it's not gonna work. There's pikes. Just run. You really... You, ah, I, I don't see a play for red, honestly. Like, Gabetto? Yeah, Gabetto. He's thinking Gabetto's as well, but... Maybe... Maybe swords? It's so bad, though. Nah, swords aren't good here. Not against... He's gonna have Bagains potential. Honestly, like, Waka's, Waka's got the checkmate down now. It's like... Yeah, Gabetto's the only thing that could maybe be good here. Stand ground. We've got stand ground. Waka's, Waka's completely fine. Honestly, Waka needs to lose some units so he can make some siege. Trying to fight heavy camels for Gabettos without crossbow or arbs? Nah, it's fine. It's not going to be that many Gabettos. The economy for red is not good enough to make Gabetto really. It's open. Like, raiding with the camels here wasn't really good either. The camels needed to protect the, the siege. Actually, the fact that uh, Waka's not really using his units properly is kind of good. Okay, I mean, they are raiding. I just think it's too little too late. Raiding with your camels is rarely a good play, though. Especially if you're trying to siege. Yeah, GG. He knows it's over. Good game, though. Actually, that, that was a lot of back and forth. Red got ahead early, but then... Took some bad fights in, in mid castle age and just really, really lost. Like it was, uh, where was it? So third TC need to be down for sure. Instead of, yeah, instead of these farms, these farms should have been a TC. Um, having, having the res like this is pretty awkward. Right here, red saw that blue outnumbered him. He saw that blue outnumbered, and he had to run. So what's the response? You make a counter unit, especially as Malians. Like you make, you make camels here. Especially Bulgarians are gonna have good upgrades. You can't like fight them in upgrades. So you make camels here. And if you want to secure this, probably need to have a third stable and more camels. Iron casting is a waste here. Just more camels is way better. Look, we're we, we're prioritizing getting upgrades instead of making units, and this is why we lost this fight. We're getting like a heavy plow and armor instead of just making more guys. More guys fights these guys, but less guys just loses the game. That's where um, that's where the game was over. That's way higher level play than my fifteen hundred play. Well, yeah, I hear Bulgarians are trash. Oh, well, you were able to utilize their strengths effectively here. I mean, if you're not really playing feudal age and you're getting to castle age where you have strong options. Well, Bulgarian's going to be quite a bit better. Well, how did you guys feel about that opening, though? Did you guys feel like it was, like you, you were off to a good start? Or what? You guys should take it to ladder and tell me later. I feel like I would die. Well, you got to go for um, skirmishers against, like, anything. <laughs> there we go. Completely potatoed it. 
yeah, it wasn't perfect. Anyways, you guys can watch the VOD if you want to see more. I was up on 24. Wait, what? 24 what? 24 minutes? 24. What? Oh, to feudal. Yeah, you were up way too late. I Like, I, I don't know. I don't know what happened. Maybe you just are so used to pushing deer that you didn't realize you were going to have, like, zero food here. That's probably it. Yeah, it was it was kind of late. So, you can just see... Wait. Yeah, what what happened with the economy? Maybe too late to berries? Maybe we went to berries. Standing around. My main criticism of your wall is that instead of placing this wall, it should have just been like a wall like this. There we go. Had zero idea of where to put it. Yeah, you want to be thinking about your TC locations from the start of the game. That's part of your scouting in Dark Ages, thinking about TC locations. Um. Yeah, I think just sheep scout. Maybe maybe you're not stacking your sheep properly. I don't know. What's what's going on here? <laughs> stacking sheep is really important for efficiency. Yeah, we had a It's not too inefficient though. Still having like one vill idle for a long time there. Not perfect. Okay. Yeah, I guess you couldn't really sh stack too much. All right. Yes. I mean, I think it was just sending to wood way too early. Like the second lumber camp. That's why you should never be sending to a second lumber camp unless you're ready to go up. Especially if you already have four on wood, right? So. Basically, you rebounce once you're up. The second lumber camp, I think, on this map was good, though. I think Red probably shouldn't have made a second lumber camp. This was a one TC map. Or one lumber camp map. I, I would have just walled to the, the mill and then down to this hill and just to here. And just in front. And you just go like this. You play towards Castle Age and then you expand once you're in Castle Age. But yeah, the, the reason why you couldn't click up is because you, you sent Vils to Wood uh, before you had 500 food so send send bills to the second wood line as soon as you have 500 food it's not don't base it on your villager count or anything base it on your food count because your goal right now is to collect 500 food to get up da. these guys cover all of your wood needs that you need for now these guys 500 food and you get up i know oh he's a cm <laughs> he's back for vengeance He's back to take his points from yesterday. All right. We need to showcase the beginner build order against ACCM. We can play towards scouts, I think. But we'll use we'll use the same concepts. Gold be here, please. Oh, we'll have a legendary base. Absolutely legendary base. Like, you, you actually can't get a better base than this. We're just going to adapt it to high level and just go three on wood. For now. Basically, I'm going to be walling here a little bit earlier. That could be my barracks spot. We'll go like that. I 
don't know where my deer are. No problem. A little bit late. Not having deer is kind of a problem. Ah. Actually, now that I walled it, or now that I scouted this, I only made like one of these walls. It's fine. That's just objectively better. Other boar needs to be. It's gonna be out here, right? Has to be. Did he just steal it? What is this? No, it's here. Okay. One thing that I didn't scout was the back. I need to see if this is closed. I'm pretty sure it is. Really, my deer? Are they actually that far away? Crazy. It's way too early, anyways. That's so funny. I hope he has militia coming this way and he'll think that it's like half walled. The jankest. Alright. Against scouts. The wrong one. Need a house. Oh, he's styling. That's where he adds the archery range, right? Oh, okay. Construir. Presto, construir. Presto, agora, Presto, 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 Pres
Sí. I need that. Oh, I didn't even get the hit. Nice. We need a tower here if he has archers. These are Hindustani scouts that they're hitting hard. Stop pills just to get army out. Should have the market early though. Monday? 
gonna need probably spears. I need to get armor first though. Oh yeah yeah. Oh, he's, he's walled. He's gonna have a camel. Should go clean that. Presta. Wait, I didn't realize you could still do that bug. He's gonna have camels, I need to get out. These guys are supposed to go up there. That's really bad though. Uh, 
Is it open? It's open. I have zero build in the queue. What am I doing? I know this thing doesn't even go to the right spot. Oh yeah, yeah, okay, whatever.
Oh, I didn't even see that. Letting him have that was pretty bad. I think just, um, I mismanaged my economy mid game.
don't really have enough, right? That's all I needed, right? <laughs> Just kind of trolling with the scouts, honestly. These guys just didn't really get where they needed to go. If only I could make supremacy in this age. Can you imagine? Just these like few scouts. <laughs> Alright. Let's try and take another fight and then we'll just call it because we're dead. Gunpowder v gunpowder, alright, gee. I mean, the build worked. The build worked. It's just against ACCM, he's a really good player. So. Yeah, that's. That's the main uh, problem. Middle game. Yeah, middle game eco management. I had way too much gold. Like, I took his gold, and then I took. I put a TC here, and I just didn't have wood. I also let him take this gold. I need to have better vision on the map. 